everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today, another Fish Room Files. We're messing about with plants, with CO2, with fertilizers, with auto-dosing, all that good stuff. So let's get stuck in. Yeah, so the Fish Room Files is just me messing around in the Fish Room, doing the various jobs that need to be done. And one of the things I want to do is concentrate a little bit more on plants for a while. So you saw me setting up my CO2 for this tank. I haven't actually used it for this tank. Full disclosure, we do still have CO2 going, but I'm actually using my proper pressurized CO2 kit, which is running down here. So that's running on a solenoid, on a timer, which means the CO2 will come on every morning, half an hour before the lights come on, and go off half an hour before the lights go off. And hopefully that will give us some good, decent plant growth. Now, obviously, you will be able to see this is now a discus tank. I haven't actually made a video about moving the the fish across, but yes, it's the discus, Congo tetras, Alestes tetras, Derby corridoras, and some plants. I've got more plants planned. These ones are just the ones I've borrowed and stolen from other tanks, um, rather than the new ones that I've bought. There's a couple of new ones in there. Um, but I want to make sure I'm fertilizing as well. So job number one is going to be setting up auto-dosing of ferts in this tank. So this is the Geocod. Um, auto dosing pump. Um, I used to use it in my old house on my display tank there but it's been sat in a box the last couple of years. I'm hoping it's still going to work. The premise is you have a line into your fertilizer and this little pump automatically measures out a dose each day and pumps it through the outlet back into your tank um, so you can more accurately dose or more safely dose. So rather than putting in your weekly requirements in one go at the start of the week or the start of the month or whatever it is, it puts in that weekly requirement over the course of a week. Should be better. Um, this controls it to a very fine level and it worked really well for me. I just hope it still works. So we'll see how we go on. I just need to cut appropriate length of tubing because I'm going to run it down here and pop it back into the tank there. Still works, got it all programmed in and everything. I'm just priming the lines. So I'm using the TNC complete and iron because that's what I'm lacking a little bit of. It's the complete light actually. Um, but you need to prime the lines just to make sure that they are full and ready to go. We just run the manual, run the pump manually. And I'm using clear line just so as I can see this and make sure it's working properly. But once I'm happy with it, I might swap these over to something a little bit more pleasing to the eye, so to speak. Um, but that's it effectively set now. So every day I'm going to have six mil of the TNC light and one mil of the iron, or maybe two mil, I can't remember what I set it at now. We'll dose through these. Better because it's smaller doses more often. Better I don't have to remember doing it, so it can, I can be consistent. Um, yeah, so job done tick so the idea is I have the pump up there and I've got the bottles of fertilizer down there I've just got a two-stage pump here because that's all I really need that's what I've got so that's what I'm going to use and I'm using the TNC light the TNC light is a liquid fertilizer and um, it's the same as TNC complete but it doesn't have any nitrate or phosphate in it which was something I always found I had a bit excess of so I didn't need to be adding extra nitrate and phosphate helped me with my algae control issues and iron because some of the plants were showing some signs of iron deficiency. So that's my go-to formula. I'm not tied to these, but I've been really happy with them. So if you have any ideas of other fertilizers that I could be trying, because they're getting to the bottom of the bottles now, let me know. I'm happy to try some out and see what I think of them. So I've got automatic CO2 coming on and off. I've got automatic fertilization. I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks to get a bulk order of some more plants to really fill this out and properly go for it and see how we got on with that but I'm really quite happy with how this looks it's kind of plain for a discus uh, scape as such but I like it there's lots of different plants in there there's lots of areas for some of the fish to move around and interact with but plenty of free space as well so as much as I love a planted tank I want to give lots of space for the fish to swim around in too and I think we've got that Right, the next job is on this tank. This is my rainbow fish tank. Basically a big poop ton of java ferm in this corner, some bulbitis, and a couple of other ones that are hiding away. This is where I've actually installed the 
Fluval Bio CO2 Pro Kit. So from a distance it looks fairly well planted and the plants look like they're doing well but if you look in really close some of them are losing it a little bit so again more ferts needed, a little more care needed and this plant can look, this tank can look good. And here we've got the bio CO2 and you might think oh that's lying a bit funny Graham. Yeah I made a bit of a boo-boo with this. It doesn't actually sit up straight anymore because as I was messing around with it the other day I dropped it from here all the way down to there on the nice concrete floor and put a nice big dent in it. So sorry about everyone who was hoping to win this as a prize. It's now considerably less valuable but it has been working well fairly consistent. Uh, I've just got a slow bubble count going through it at the moment but it's not got any kind of solenoid valve to regulate switching this on and off so it's running like this 24 hours a day. Ideally what I'd be doing is running it with a higher bubble count but only during the hours that I'm getting light. So I'm going to try and see if I can figure out a way to retrofit a solenoid valve to this. A solenoid is just this, the same as a solenoid in any other application like a car or whatever. It's basically a switch, electric current, opens the valve and lack of electric current closes the valve. So you can have this plugged in, connected to a timer, set it to the same as your lights. Then you have the CO2 coming in here. That's either open or closed. Open lets the CO2 out and it can do its normal operation. Closed, i.e. timed off, no CO2. And the normal way of using this was you'd put this straight after the the outlet here before you do the bubble counter and stuff like that but there's no reason why you couldn't do it afterwards so I might try that first off to see if that works and um, have the line coming out of this going into this that should work and again because it is a low pressure system there's not loads of pressure that's just going to blow all this apart or blow this apart but that's why we test these things to see if it does work so let me hook that up and see if it does indeed work well the theory does work um, so I've got the CO2 is on, the solenoid is off and doesn't matter how much I turn the valve up, it pretty much stops, nothing flies off. So the theory works, but in practice this valve is a little bit too heavy for this hose and crimps it. So I think I'll need to look at where I'm going to place this and just make sure that I'm not crimping the, the hose anywhere. Yeah, I'll have a think about that. So, I've done a bit of a temporary fix. That's the CO2 bottles there, the canisters there, the solenoid sitting on top of the shelf there, and it's plugged into the same timer as the lights. So, as I might give this away as a prize, come and join me on a Friday night live stream. I'll just do this very temporarily. Um, and then that goes down into this tank with the CO2 hidden behind that big plant mass so that should work quite well. Another job done. Dick! In terms of jobs to do there are always plenty more so if you like this kind of thing click that subscribe button down there come and join me on my live streams on a Friday night. We've got mega tank here is touch wood still going well everything seems to be okay. The next jobs are probably this tank here so in here is my Fahaka puffer so he's still quite small as you can see so he's got plenty of time left in this tank um, but he is going to get bigger so this is not his forever tank I'm thinking his forever tank is going to be that tank which is where the discus were before that so I've drained that down and it needs a bit of a clean out but I'm thinking of doing another aquascape type thing with loads of plants just so as the Fahaka can destroy them all because that's probably what I'll do so maybe I'll need to rethink that but I'm thinking a big clump of rocks and woods coming out again lots of um, wallowing space in the sand for the Fahaka that, that should be a good that's a five foot tank so that should be a good tank for him to live in probably for the rest of his life um, so that's probably going to be on the agenda too and then we've still got various breeding projects. We've got the little baby discus. Um, where's he at? At the back there. I don't know if you can see him. He now looks like a proper discus. 
but yeah just one from that breeding project but yeah I'm happy with him focus he's coming on well he's taking larger bits of food now so I think he's definitely past the worst of it and will be making it so yes I'll go on and do the rest of my jobs that I need to do got some water changes to do and things like that but so far I think we're okay thank you for joining me see you in the next one bye